British uh, Chamber of Commerce and BASF and today's seminar about the circular economy. Uh, the uh, uh, German-Swedish Tech Forum is a forum that we have been running for four years and it's a forum between companies in Sweden to, and Germany to increase collaboration. Uh, previous themes that we have talked about at these seminars have been uh, digitalization, energy, transportation and so on. And of course, networking is an important part when it comes to collaboration. But uh, in these pandemic times, we can't have the usual conference that we usually do. So instead, we run this webinar that we send from the German-Swedish Chamber of Commerce in Stockholm. Um, and today we have about 200 viewers from 505 countries. So it's a large interest for this topic that we're going to talk about. My name is Thomas Malmer and I'm an advisor and consultant in uh, research and innovation policy, basically, and I will be the host for this seminar today. And the theme, the theme that we're going to talk about today is how we can speed up the work with the circular economy. And uh, we will focus on uh, the material part of this and especially plastic, since uh, the materials industry is a vital part in, a circular, in making the circular economy a reality. Um, and Sweden and the Nordic countries as a whole is, are interesting areas for German companies for investment and research when it comes to sustainable development and the circular economy. So, we will talk more about this today, about the possibilities and what we can learn from other companies and how the governmental actions in the future will be. Uh, during this hour that we will spend together, we will hear about the work that BASF is doing in their action plan for the circular economy and we will also hear about QuantaFuel, which used to be a startup company that now has grown quite big that works with uh, recycling of plastic, uh, chemical recycling of plastics. And we will also have Ibrahim Bailan here, who is the Minister for Enterprise, Innovation and Industry, and he will talk about the Swedish actions for the circular economy. Uh, in the end of this hour, we will wrap up and you will have the possibility to ask questions to the speakers from BSF. And in the, in the bottom of the picture right now, you, you see an email address. So if you have any thoughts uh, about the seminar specific questions, you can send them by mail. And we try to uh, bring them up in the end. So that was a little bit about today. Now I'm going to give the floor or the screen to our first speaker who is Katja Sharpwinkel. She's the president of Region Europe, Middle East and Africa at BSF. And she will give us an introduction to the work that BSF is doing with uh, their action plan for circular, circular economy and how this is connected to the work that the EU do, uh, do uh, uh, the Green Deal. So Katja, I give the word to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Thomas, and uh, I hope that you can all see and hear me well. Um, regards also here from my side and welcome, um, and thanks a lot for, for having us on this webinar today and the possibility to connect virtually with all of you. Um, yeah, we are happy for, for having the opportunity um, to let you know how we can take first steps towards the circular economy. Um, and I would like to take a look with you into the uh, current EU framework and also in the BSF ambitious road towards circular economy and also our role in implementing the Green Deal. Um, and if you go to the next slide, please. I think what we see here, if we think about the political context, um, there have not been so many days in the last months where we haven't heard anything about the Green Deal. So we can certainly say the Green Deal is kind of a Europe's man on the moon moment um, and the EU Green Deal is the central project of the new EU Commission and provides a framework of a wide range of political projects. It is not just um, conceived as a climate project uh, aiming for uh, making Europe a climate neutral continent, but it's also um, conceived to be a social project to support the just transition. It's on top conceived as an economic project seeking to rejuvenate and EU investment and competitiveness. 
It's conceived as a European project to give a new purpose um, to and unity of the EU. And it's conceived as an international project to support the EU Commission's intention to become a more geopolitical one. If you go to the next slide, please. And if we take a bit of a deeper look into the Green Deal priorities, uh, we see that circular economy is one clear priority of the Green Deal, which has been translated into a new circular economy action plan. And what we see here is that uh, overall 35 initiatives have been defined uh, within the circular economy action plan, addressing circularity of resource consumption with a focus uh, on those industries that are highly resource intensive, yeah, like plastics, packaging, construction, batteries, vehicles. Um, it's giving a high attention to the design for recycling and new actions, for example, uh, include the intention to introduce a mandatory recycling, uh, recycled plastic content in the rice industries and also the ambition to make all packaging that is brought into the EU market recyclable by 2030. If we now move to the next slide, we would like to show you um, how BSF can contribute to circular economy. And I'd like to start with our company purpose, which is we create chemistry for a sustainable future. And before looking a bit into more depths, how we can invest into and speed up circular economy, I'd like to guide you also through the key measures that we have defined or the other key measures that we have defined to create chemistry for a sustainable future. Um, starting with decoupling our CO2 emissions from our growth through a carbon management program, uh, which for example includes developing products that help our customers to lower their C CO2 emissions, which is also about uh, increasing efficiency in production the use of uh, uh, renewable resources, but also to develop new technologies uh, and innovations that help us um, to become carbon neutral. Um, it also includes carbon footprint program. So we are for our whole portfolio, about 40,000 products, we will provide a carbon footprint. And if you look at the right side, um, this ambition and these key measures also include the target to increase the sales of our accelerator products. And accelerator products are defined as those who have a substantial sustainability contribution along the value chain. And now if you look into the middle part, here it's actually about the key measure to invest and speed up the transition towards a circular economy. And the circular economy concept aims at decoupling economic growth from the use of finite resources. And this in future will require more durable and more resources, efficient products and an increase in reusing, repairing and also recycling. BSF is applying the concept in a number of ways and mainly with two complementary approaches. One of that is keep it smart. So there we constantly look for techniques to decrease materials, but keep function and durability at an optimum. And the other one is close the loop. So here we look at solutions for customers along the value chain to re-enter waste um, back into the product life cycles. Um, just to mention a few examples. One recent example for mechanical recycling is a cooperation of BSF with the Australian company Security Matters, where it's about enabling the physical and digital tracking of plastics, helping to better track and recycle the plastic waste streams. Another example for organic recycling um, is the use of biodegradable plastics in those areas um, of application where biodegradability offers a significant ecological and also economic advantage. Here, for example, uh, certified compostable organic waste bags um, can be mentioned. And finally, chemical recycling. So in chemical recycling, mixed plastic waste is converted into pyrolysis oil, which is then fed back into a network as a raw material. And using a mass balance approach, the secondary raw material used can be assigned to selected products. 
And these products are then given the addition C cycle, so for chem cycled. And in order to further increase the commercial availability of these C cycled, so chem cycled products, BSF is also working with QuantaFuel to make this possible. And first pilots uh, have already been implemented here. Let's take a look uh, into the uh, chem cycling process in a bit more detail. And if you would move to the next slide, we can see it. So here it's explained basically how the BSF chem cycling contributes to a true circular economy for plastics. We are breaking a new ground here uh, in plastic waste recycling with the chem cycling. And uh, what is really important to mention is that we are collaborating closely with partners along the value chain. That means we are working together with customers and partners which range from waste management companies to technology providers and packaging producers to really build a circular value chain for plastics. And if we walk together through that cycle, um, at first, um, it's about us. So we as a consumers, we start with using and disposing plastic products, uh, for example, packaging and tires. In a second step, so the waste companies collect and sort the waste and supply our recycling partners with it. Then if you look into the third step, no, I think it's actually, uh, um, it's, it's a bit of a different slide than um, we might have an issue here. Can you go to the next, maybe, Sophia? Yes, sorry. So this was, a, this was a wrong one. So if you go to the third, uh, third uh, step here, the plastic waste uh, is converted into pyrolysis oil and uh, then by, used by BSF's partners uh, for th thermo, thermochemical process called pyrolysis. Um, in this, uh, the, the result of this, the pyrolysis oil is then in a four step purified and can be used as a feedstock uh, in, in BSF Verbunds production. And then at the fifth stage here, you see that the recycled or secondary raw material is then fed uh, uh, in BSF's Verbund production. And under the mass balance approach, the share of this recycled raw material can be allocated to all chemicals which are produced in this Verbund. And finally then, in the six steps, our customers actually are using these chemicals again for their own products. Um, and our chem cycled sales products have exactly the same properties as the materials made from fossil based raw materials. And if you move to the next slide, please. I'd like to summarize how with chem cycling we can contribute to a circular economy and to save resources and emissions. So we contribute to the recycling of plastic waste for which no high value recycling processes are established yet. And examples um, of waste plastics which are difficult to recycle mechanically include um, plastics with adhering food residues, but also multi-layer uh, food packaging, scrap tires or composite uh, plastics used in the automotive or construction industries. Um, by this, we can turn low value plastic waste into high value virgin grade high performance materials. And as just said and mentioned, these recycled material can count against our customers recycling targets and the product carbon footprint is reduced as fossil resources are saved. And also CO2 emissions um, are cut by 50% compared to insulination. So mentioning all this, uh, we can conclude here that camp cycling um, should not be seen as a competition, but as complementation for mechanical recycling. Or we could also say it's certainly not the solution, but it can definitely be part of a solution. And this, by this, I would like uh, to conclude my introduction into the circular economy and would uh, give back to Thomas. Thank you for listening. Uh, thank you very much, Katya, for your uh, fruitful information about both chemical recycling and the work that BSF is doing. Uh, we will continue now with um, uh, another perspective on this, and that is uh, the Norwegian company QuantaFuel that is working with chemical recycling from plastics. And 
Uh, from Oslo, we have uh, Ketil uh, Böhm, who is the CEO for Quantafuel, who is uh, ready to take over. So, uh, Ketil, I give the word to you. Uh, I think you have to turn on your microphone. The technical challenges of a, of a modern world, huh? <laughs> Uh, well, thank you, first of all, for, uh, for allowing me to present QuantaFuel here today. Let me see if I can be just as uh, good when it comes to this next operation here. I'm going to try to uh, share my screen with you. Uh, oh, from here. I'm doing it from my side now. <clears throat> There we go. Everyone see this uh, well now? Works fine. That's good. Thank you. Well, QuantaFuel, we are a Norwegian-based uh, company with uh, operations at the moment in Denmark. We're building our first commercial plant for chemical recycling in Denmark. We've had a pilot plant before, uh, but we <clears throat> are now uh, in the first phase of turning on our first commercial uh, uh, factory in Denmark, we will turn mixed consumer household waste into chemical material that will be transported to BSF and Ludwigshafen and transformed to new high quality plastic products. When we started QuantaFuel um, seven years ago, it was not uh, a lot of attention around plastic, actually. Um, it uh, might feel like it's uh, something that has been going on for a long time, but it's actually the last three or four years that uh, plastic waste have received a lot of attention. And the reason is, of course, that a lot of it ends up in um, the oceans. And, uh, and, that is, uh, and the pictures from beaches around the world is something that has the public uh, uh, to to speak up and, and protest against this. But more importantly for us than the attention around plastic waste is that it has turned into new policies. And in forefront of that development is the European Union. And they have, among others, stated that they want to increase the recycling rate to 50% on packaging material by 2025. And they also, a couple of months ago, said that they would impose a tax of 800 euro on virgin plastic. That, of course, creates a tremendous market for us, both when it comes to available raw material for our process, but also when it comes to the price for what we have paid for the end products. This is uh, basically the same that was shown in the last presentation. I mean, it's good that we have the same view on the world with the, our partner in, in Germany. But we are taking uh, mixed household waste. We transform it uh, into a product that can be used by BSF. Plastic uh, has had a negative spin around it for the last couple of years. But in reality, and maybe I shouldn't say this, it's a fantastic material. It is used in basically, basically everything from uh, from paint to clothes, and we don't have any good alternative. The PC that I'm talking into, which uh, sounds a little bit uh, strange, uh, only thinking nine or 12 months back, but the, this is the new reality, is made of plastic. And, and what should be the alternative? 53% of the weight of an Airbus is plastic. Without plastic, it would be much heavier, use a lot more fuel. Even the dreaded carrier bag, if you try to replace it, it's three times the CO2 emission. So plastic is here to stay and it has some fantastic properties, but as a waste, it has some huge uh, environmental uh, negative consequences. We are, of course, not the only company uh, together with BSF that has recognized that chemical recycling is going to be a huge new market. Um, McKinsey thinks that this is going to be a 75 billion US market per year uh, within the next 10 years. And a number of large companies is streaming to this, uh, coming to this market. Neste, Shell, Sabic, Dow, and also the recycling companies, Remondis and Vula has their own strategies for uh, capturing this uh, market. And this is what uh, plastic waste uh, looks like. Um, and I think 
when looking at this picture, uh, it is uh, understandable that trying to uh, mechanically sort this is difficult and has its limitation because if you're going to mechanically sort waste, you're going to have to separate on type of plastic, on color, and you have to clean it. And just looking at the picture, uh, you understand that that is actually very challenging and has been for some, some while and it has its limitation. Pyrolysis of plastic is not new. It's not a quantum fuel invention. There has been a factory operating since 2006 in Thailand. There are a number of factories in Spain. But um, when you pyrolyze uh, plastic, when you heat it and cool it down, you will have an oil with a number of impurities. So what quantum fuel is trying to do is to actually combine step three and four in the in the previous presentation held by BSF, that we not only do the pyrolysis of plastic, but that we also upgrade this oil and remove impurities. So we remove uh, impurities like ash particles, chlorine, sulfur, and we also have to catalyst to change the molecular structure. And that's why we sometimes refer to this as a miniature refinery, because we are trying to change the molecular structure uh, into alkanes, to naphtha and diesel, that can go to uh, Germany and easily become new plastic. And this is, uh, in our mind, a very uh, environmentally friendly process. We use the energy from the plastic mostly to run uh, this uh, process. And we have made an LCA, or we had of course, an external company do an LCA, and at the moment it shows the 90% reduction in CO2 in production of this uh, material. Out of one ton of plastic, we produce 800 kilos of products to be shipped to Germany. 10% is lighter gases that will go to run the factory, and the last 10% will be ash that can be used for incineration and energy production, either long distance heating or electricity. So there is a number of large companies who wants to enter this market. We believe that we have an advantage when it comes to technology and time. We are uh, one of the first and we are for certain one, the first one when it comes to this integrated system to also upgrade the oil. But we have some very large partners on our side as well. Vito, uh, the largest um, energy trader in the world, uh, the 232 billion US dollar revenue last year. BSF, that you just heard from, uh, that is an offtake partner, but also a development partner. Uh, they have been with us since we uh, entered into that agreement uh, more or less exactly a year ago and been present in Skive to help us get this plan up and running at uh, full capacity. And then we have a third uh, large uh, strategic shareholder in Kirby, better known as the Lego family, then for obvious reasons are interested in recycled plastic uh, uh, material. BSF uses 20 million ton of NAFTA each year, so my 16,000 ton capacity in Skive is not really relevant, <laughs> we have to admit. So should we be relevant to BSF and the rest of the world? We need to do this industrial scale. So after Skive, we're going to um, establish a small plant in Kristiansund in Norway. And why are we uh, making another new small plant? The reason for that is that in Kristiansund, we're going to combine mechanical recycling and chemical recycling hand in hand, meaning that we're going to take those fractions that are easy to recycle mechanically into uh, mechanically recycled material, and then we're going to take the rest into chemical recycled material. That will make it the highest possible recycling grade uh, from one factory. And then we're going big. We're going to announce now that we're going to build in Esbjerg in, uh, in, in, in Denmark, 80,000 ton, and then we have a plan to roll out 100 to 200,000 ton capacity plans across Europe, and we have started to look at Antwerp and Amsterdam together with VITOL. We also probably going to do the same with BSF. This is how the future looks like. This is how 80,000 ton plant uh, uh, will look like. And of course, we have tried to think 
about environment the entire way using solar panels for electricity and, and have a totally integrated plant uh, and uh, optimized on energy efficiency to have as low environmental footprint as humanly possible. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Kjetil, for an interesting introduction to QuantaFuel and what you're doing in chemical and mechanical uh, recycling as well. Uh, we just got some questions just about the mechanical uh, recycling and you, you touched upon that when you said that you will first start to uh, do a mechanical recycling and then the, the rest waste will be a chemical recycled, if I understood you right. right. Uh, yeah. But, uh, but how, how sustainable uh, is your solution if you compare it to other solutions? Well, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very sustainable. Uh, first of all, uh, we uh, don't see ourselves instead of mechanical recycling. Uh, there are fractions in the market uh, that could be easily mechanically recycled. And as I said in Kristiansund, we will have uh, a combined plant. Uh, we will have a, a pre-sorting, pre-selection uh, and, and take some fractions to mechanical uh, recycling ourselves. And then the rest will go for chemical recycling. But the main issue that we have is the um, contaminated, difficult household waste. And it's, it's no uh, bigger challenges if you have uh, uh, fractions that are sorted and cleaned and, and so on, that, that everyone can, can recycle that. So, so we are attacking uh, those uh, fractions of the market, the waste market that is most difficult to, um, to, to handle. And it's with a much lower energy uh, consumption than you find in an alternative use. Either that is mechanically mechanical, uh, but the real alternative to, to the waste streams that we are handling is incineration uh, and burning for uh, for um, uh, for long distance heating or energy production, which is has a very low uh, energy efficiency. So uh, our technology will will highly improve uh, the uh, environmental footprint. Uh, I mean, in Sweden, for instance, uh, uh, waste recycling is, is very big and it's used mostly for district heating. But uh, have, have you any plans for investment in Sweden as well? Of course, uh, Sweden is a, an interesting market uh, right now. There's been Denmark and then uh, Norway. Um, we don't have any concrete plans uh, for Sweden uh, yet, but, but, uh, but that, should, that should come, definitely. And, and I know and we all know that in, in, uh, in Sweden you have a, a huge industry when it comes to burning waste and creating long distance heating and electricity. But many of those plants would like to have the plastic out because you're going to have CO2 taxes and uh, the energy uh, content of plastic is extremely high. So it replaces a lot more biological material. So one ton of plastic replaces five ton of bio uh, biological material. So if you get the plastic out, you could you could uh, receive a lot more waste. And, and most of this plant has as their main revenue source uh, gate fees. So so these these strategies goes hand in hand. And, and many of these uh, uh, incineration places in, in Denmark and other in also in, in Sweden, I will guess, uh, has already started to impose uh, rules to decrease the amount of plastic that they receive. Yeah, thank you Kjertel. And this, the, the same thing will happen in Sweden where they will impose a tax on waste incineration quite soon uh, just to get, for instance, the plastic out of the, of the flow. Thank you Kjertel Bern, uh, Bern for your uh, presentations and insights about this. We will continue our program now and we will give the screen to Mark Mayer who is the CEO for um, BISF in the Nordic countries and he's based in, in Copenhagen. So welcome Mark and tell us a little bit about how, how you connect the dots between the chemical engineer as a chemical industry and the chemical recycling. 
Yeah, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Um, yes, uh, indeed, Copenhagen um, on the line um, following Germany and Oslo. Um, sorry, I can't be there today. Um, certainly had all plans, even flights booked, but it just isn't the right time for traveling. So what I would like to do now is to connect the two pieces, connect the dots as part of the um, uh, of, of the agenda and maybe allude a little bit more to what uh, Katja already started. Um, I can't see the screen at the moment. Kietil, if you could just... Um, uh, no, I can. Thank you very much. Um, um, if uh, try to connect the dots and with this um, we just want to highlight that that we really firmly believe that chemistry uh, is an uh, enabler to circular economy uh, we believe our products um, not only uh, plastic based materials but the products that we have in our various businesses they really support the efficient use of resources um, either make products more durable, we extract more value from certain products and processes with chemistry. Um, we are able to actually um, uh, regenerate and recover materials. When we talk about plastic, uh, mechanical plastic recycling and then the recompounding of materials, we actually uh, contribute certain solutions into this compounding um, um, uh, process. So actually the recycling of plastic materials actually is an immediate business where BSF is also active in with its solution. And of course, um, what we also touched on is the minimization of waste and, and, and essentially also carbon footprint with our products, but also throughout the value chain together with our customers. If you go to the next slide, please. We've we've seen and heard from Chetil uh, about, you know, what quanta fuel um, actually represents what the uh, what the, the the technology looks like. Um, we're partnering um, with Quantafuel, as Shetil said. But actually, this is one partner. We're also working with other partners across Europe, uh, using and uh, facilitating different waste streams. For example, we have partnerships in Hungary. For example, we have partnerships in Germany, and we're continuously adding. Um, also our partnerships. As Kito said, that um, uh, overall uh, for us BASF, we, we need quite a lot of these materials. And I can tell you that actually on the customer end, so the partners that we work with, I think the ambition and the readiness uh, very much coming from consumer trends is is really starting to grow, and it's going to. We are, we're, we need as a as a as a as an industry player. We need to work on both ends. We're creating solutions together with customers, and on the other hand, we also need to work with companies and partners like Quanta Fuel and others to actually make sure that we actually have sufficient feedstocks and material waste streams, either based on waste material streams or bio-based materials in order to satisfy our customer demands. If we move to the next slide, I'd like to just give you a little bit of an overview of real products that are already out there in the market. And, and here you see a selection of products that are already using today. They are commercialized using um, uh, chem-cycled, C-cycled products from BASF. We have, a part, we have partnerships in the automotive industry where uh, structural components are being replaced um, 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 with uh, sea cycled materials. We have in the area of packaging, particularly food packaging, where we, we have solutions that are already out there, in fact, on shelf. And then even on, also uh, in areas that you wouldn't maybe necessarily immediately expect. Yoga mats is another customer and partner of ours that work with our chem cycled materials for their products. But it's not only chem cycled. If we move to the next um, slide, please. Um, this is something which really is, is immediately available in Sweden, and we've been talking about this already in previous years, that next to uh, waste-based um, um, feedstocks, alternative feedstock to minimize CO2, we're also working with partners on biomass feedstocks um, in order to feed those alternatively, again, via biomass uh, um, or bio, a bio mass balance approach into our Verbund structures. And here you see two, two solutions that are immediately available in Sweden. Klettermusen, uh, I'm sure the, the outdoors and the mountaineers amongst you know the brand. Um, we are supplying um, biomass balanced um, uh, fabric, um, um, performance fabrics uh, for the outer skin um, of of the um, of the uh, of the clothing of the performance wear, 
Uh, and alternatively, a uh, company, uh, Caparol Active also in Sweden, they have a biomass balanced uh, product for decorative paint um, that is actually uh, commercially available also in, uh, uh, in, in Sweden as we speak. And these are just two examples that are immediately relevant for Sweden, but we actually have more and more of our customers globally are starting to adopt biomass uh, balanced content products, same methodology. We we are feeding an equal amount of allocated biomass for the final product into our Verbund structures. And so by that, it operates a little bit like you would know from the renewable energy grid uh, as an example. Next slide, please. It doesn't stop there. Uh, we're also active, very active with partners. And here you see Adidas as being one of our key partners on, on mechanical recycling. And here the key bit, for example, on the on the, uh, uh, the the future craft loop shoe is that it's a one product, it's a one material shoe uh, that is composed uh, of, of, of a high-tech material, thermoplastic polyurethane, TPUs, and we're the key partner for this, which actually then enables Adidas to have a full circular uh, consumer uh, process whereby um, the material can be returned and then actually reused um, and re-extruded for future use. And then last but not least, if we move on one more slide, Katja already alluded to it. It's not only um, the material nature and sourcing, we also have uh, products in our portfolio, so bio-based uh, and, bio and compostable materials, for example, for uh, for waste bags, but also for agricultural applications, mulch film that can be actually plowed in and then actually decompose. Um, and by the same token, it actually also has additional food waste attributes because it extends lifetime um, of food uh, when we store it at home. Um, last slide. Um, so another one that is completely on uh, outside of the of the material space is uh, battery recycling, a huge topic at the moment, electrification of fleets. And here BSF is, is really um, heavily investing also into the build up of a European value chain. And as we speak about virgin grade material for battery and cathode materials that are essential to make um, e-mobility in Europe work, we're at the same time um, developing a recycling infrastructure for batteries of the future in order to complement um, our production processes going forward. So at the start out, we are building um, complementing recycling facilities across Europe in order to support um, the OEM industry, the automotive OEM industry, in order to close the cycle from the start. What does, if we move to the next and last page, what does that all combine? We need partnerships. We need to work with customers. We need to work with um, with academia. We need to work with governments and authorities in order to create a framework that allows these solutions um, to be successful in the market. We need to be open and transparent, working uh, on the processes, the standards, in order to ensure that what we promise is also being delivered uh, cradle to grave. And this is uh, where we really also one reason why we actually do this um, this uh, webinar today to call for um, to give that overview of solutions and to engage into a dialogue. Thank you so much for the time. Here from BSF, uh, you you will be back later when we have some Q and A in the end of the program today. So. Uh, all the audience, you can think of questions, and if you have any questions, you can send them by mail, uh, as you have seen before. Now we actually have a guest in the studio, so not everything will be online. So I would like to welcome Ibrahim Bailan, Minister for Business, Industry and Innovation, to our program. And you're going to tell us a little bit about the Swedish work with the circular economy, the strategy, and now you start to work with an action plan for how we're going to yeah. put this into action. So, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, thank you and good afternoon. Um, I'll start by uh, an overview of the Swedish uh, policy when it comes to s sustainability and, and economy. I mean, uh, Sweden aims to be one of the world's first uh, fossil-free welfare societies. Um, the climate, uh, globalization and digitalization, in our view, requires rapid change. So, uh, from our point of view, I mean, um, to mitigate uh, the, the, the climate change, to, to, to 
get a sustainable development is not only about doing the, the right thing for the environment and, and climate. It's also about laying the foundation for tomorrow's jobs, growth and welfare. And uh, I think from our point of view, we, we can all only succeed if we if we uh, do it together with uh, with our industry and uh, and uh, other countries. So um, Sweden today is the number one innova innovation country in, in the European Union and I would say one of the world's leading innovative uh, countries with a focus on co-creation between industries, um, academia and the public sector. And um, I'm, 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 I'm very convinced that we can, can find solutions to our societal cha challenge, challenges and by doing that increase our competitiveness both in Sweden but also in the European Union. Now, the German-Swedish partnership for innovation is of higher priority for us. Germany is a very important country within the European Union. It's, uh, it's our friends and we want to keep working with Germany to find solutions both within the European context but also bilaterally because there are so many similarities and there are also so many similarities in the ambitions and wills and goals that we have set for our economies and our societies. Let me give you an example. We, 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 we know that we need to, to, to have a large-scale electrification of our societies. That in itself demands a, a development of batteries, preferably in the European Union. We have the example with Northvolt that is a very good example of the cooperation between Germany and, and Sweden where where we will have uh, we will have a, a sustainable production of, of batteries in the European Union. AI goes without saying. AI is, is the technology that everybody is talking about today about that but it's not uh, I mean it's not only a, a, a marginal technology it will have a huge uh, impact on our societies. E-health Another area where I think that the partnership is important. It's also um, our our innovation cooperation is also uh, uh, important for further strengthening our, our our bilateral cooperation between between us as countries, because it addresses global challenges. Yes, but it also makes it also possible for us to make the transition to a more sustainable and circular economy. Earlier this summer, the Swedish government decided on, on a strategy for, for circular economy, which, uh, which we are now uh, making into an action plan, because we want to see that important streams for the transition to a circular economy uh, will enable us to make, uh, make uh, resources out of uh, waste and pro what was seen as waste and problems earlier. Plastic, textile, and renewable and bio-based materials, for example. We've also ha have had a, a green recovery as a priority during, both during but also after we are through with COVID-19 pandemic. We need uh, and we will make investments in, in, in test beds for bioraffineries. We will enable participation in IPCA uh, and needed investments for a green transition. Um, we have, have also, and I think that this is, uh, is, is equally important now when we are looking into a more uh, sustainable economy and, and more sustainable way of doing things, it's important for us not only to try to invest more in, 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 in R&D, but also to create cooperation when it comes to, we need to test the new technologies and th therefore the successful ongoing cooperation on test beds for the advancement of industry 4.0 or smart industry as we call it. We will also, uh, uh, for advancement of this, in this smart industry, we need to make the transition to a circular economy because it's key and I think uh, we could, could be further developed with, with, within uh, the, the, the German-Swedish partnership. The German-Swedish Tech Forum is also an exciting and, and important arena uh, where we, we could develop uh, common solutions, I think. Uh, here, um, here actors from, from, from Germany and Sweden have the possibility to meet and exchange uh, ideas around common challenges and how to address them together with innovative uh, solutions. In the end, 
we we are in a very difficult situation that that goes without saying with the pandemic with geopolitical uh, polarization that we have seen with a, with a, with a climate change uh, a huge challenge for all of us i think what we can do within the 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 german swedish uh, uh, cooperation uh, partnership i think we could show uh, and, and since we are highly developed countries with uh, with uh, uh, competitive industries uh, very skilled uh, scientists uh, and 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 and, uh, and, and uh, ambition and will from 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 the politics i think we could show that it is possible to make the transition to a more sustainable circular economy and doing it in a way that also enhances the economy creates new green jobs and by by that uh, make make showcases of both the german swedish economy but also the european economy because i think that is sorely needed in a world where we have seen too much of pessimism and too much of people saying no it's not possible let's to stick to what we have been doing earlier because we all know that what has created a lot of the problems that we have today is our old way of doing things so therefore i think from my point of view as minister for business industry and innovation the partnership between germany and sweden is also an an opportunity to show uh, that it is possible to make this transition in a way that also makes people's lives better thank you thank you minister for your uh, insights about the work you're, you're doing. I th also think it's interesting to hear that you want to see the positive sides yeah. of this and what we can do together with the, with the Germany when it comes to show the world how you how we can increase the circular economy with different type of test beds and different type of technologies and so on. Um, how do you view, I mean you mentioned that uh, plastics and textile and uh, biological materials are important in this circular uh, economy. Have, have you any sp an, anything in thought when it comes to plastic and plastic chemical recycling, for instance? Well, to be honest, I mean, we have all been aware of the problems, our old way of, of doing things. I mean, we have all read uh, in the media about the problems uh, with, with plastics in our oceans mm -hmm. to such a degree that it has a global impact, mm -hmm. and that's, that's horrible. And th at the same time, we know that our way, especially our European or Western way of doing things, uh, where we uh, have, a, have a very linear model where we, we use a lot of virgin materials and then, then just add to it year after year has created enormous problems with waste. And looking with the technological development, be it chemical or, or mechanical, we see a, 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 a huge, a very rapid uh, uh, development here where you could actually start to see what has been called waste, mm. see it as resources, resources mm. that we mm. are sorely needed, mm. that will not only clean up our act when it comes to, to the environment, but also actually create an economical development that is sorely needed also in our uh, European economies. Mm. Uh, I see that we just got a question from the audience about this, about the tax and incineration, because uh, I can imagine that uh, the, the purpose wi with the tax is to steer away from incineration and instead increase the, the uh, reuse and the recycling. Uh, how, uh, what's your view on that? Well, as former Minister for Energy in Sweden, I have been, uh, <laughs> obviously have been, uh, have been both hearing the question earlier, but also the debate. Well. To be honest with you, I mean, you you could you could have a new tax. It could be both because of the steering uh, mm -hmm. that you want to steer to, to towards the development, but also could also be fiscal. Often, mm -hmm. it's this, it, it's both both of them, and and uh, this is a discussion that we have had. And I mean, we'll see what w what w it will end. Uh, what what res the results will be? We introduced it because of of what we have been talking about. That be, uh, instead of incineration. We, with the t technological development that we have, with innovations that we have, it could become resources instead. Then, and then in in this case, even though I'm very proud of the Swedish mm -hmm. heating system, it's, it, it it has may, maybe to uh, uh, 
too high degree we be become a uh, fuel for 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 our our uh, heat and power uh, plants so yeah. so that 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 has been one of the reasons why why uh, it was introduced and obviously debated mm. okay thank you but at last uh, this action plan when will we see it well we are working with it i mean it has been very important for us as government uh, both for my department but also the, dev mm. the department of, of environment mm. that even though we are very occupied mm. with the pandemic and to try to support our industry uh, crew i mean uh, save jobs uh, at the same time combating the, the pandemic we, it has been very important for us to to keep going on with mm. with the long term mm. challenges so we are working with the, with the action plans we introduced the, the strategy during the summer and we are working currently with uh, very closely with the, with the industry and uh, with academia to, to also make this into action plans. So hopefully it will not be too long, but since we are in a very, very uncertain time, uh, I'm, 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 I'm not entirely sure if, if, if it's, it, it would be wise to, wise to say that, well, it, it will come in, in January or February. We'll do it as, as fast as we can. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, uh, I know that you're in, in, in a hurry and soon we'll leave and we will op open up for questions and answers with the BSF people quite soon. So uh, before you leave, uh, just m Mark Mayer, you are the CEO for BSF Sweden and I mean uh, the Nordics. Do you have any questions to the Minister for Business, Industry and Innovation before he leaves? Certainly, thank you, Thomas. Um, uh, firstly, Minister Bailan, I would like to congratulate you for your positive spin. So I think this is well appreciated and, and well needed in times like this. Mm. What my, and maybe I represent industry here, is is um, what do you see as government? What do you see uh, needed by industry to um, support your circular uh, economy action plan? What would you request from us? Well, to be honest with you, I, I see, I, I love a lot of the things that I see within the industry today. I mean, we, we see innovations, we see a willingness to invest, and that's sorely needed, obviously, both because of, of the problems, the challenge that we have, but also because of the economic challenge that we have. What I think uh, we will need to, and I, I, would, I would say that it, that is a cooperation both in Sweden but also cross borders. I would like to see more of uh, of suggestions how to change our legislation, how the framework both within the European Union but also nationally. Because I would say that, that today there is a willingness, there are ambitions, there are uh, investments uh, being ready to to to, to be made. But we have uh, today both problems with, with the market model that we have, business model that we have, and the legislation, both within the European Union, but also nationally. So but a cooperation, a partnership, I think that, that is what I'm looking forward to, to make this uh, happen also in reality, not only with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with opportunities rising in innovations and technology. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Ibrahim Baila, Minister for Innovation and Industry, for your time and uh, your positive spin, and also that you want to increase the collaboration between the industry and the the government in this important work we're going to go do with uh, the circular economy. Well, thank you very much. Let me say it's not only spin. I mean, to be honest, we live in a time, obviously challenging times with the pandemic. We we live in 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 a, in a worrying time when it comes to political. Uh, polarization and so on but taking just just looking into what is happening in reality with the technological development that we have with uh, with the willingness to solve a lot of uh, the problems that we are created with our old ways there are huge opportunities and as you know if nobody talks about them there is a, a great risk here that people become pessimists, mm. pessimistic, and pessimist people tends to become afraid. And if people are afraid, will not take the necessary steps to, towards change. So I think it is very important. Obviously, we have problems, we need to address them, but there is a huge op opportunity rising with the technological development that we have, uh, we are seeing you. It's in, in that sense a golden age, I would say. Mm. Thank you very much Thank you. Thank you for your time and your insights. Uh, we will continue now with uh, some uh, Q&A with uh, Katja uh, Sharpwinkel and Mark Mayer from BASF. And uh, I think you are on the screen.
And uh, if we're going to continue with the po uh, positive uh, aspects so far, I mean, it's really interesting to hear the work that BISF is doing with uh, the circular economy to show as a big company or a global big company what is possible to do. So I would like to ask you, Katja, first, why are BISF so ambitious in this work with, uh, with the circular economy? Yeah, thanks a lot for that uh, question, Thomas. I, I think partially I have answered it already in my presentation when I talked about the purpose of BSF, which is uh, about we create chemistry for a sustainable future. Um, if you look into the, the circular economy concept, you can certainly say it's kind of being a promise, yeah? a promise for uh, saving the resources of our planet, a promise for increasing sustainability of our products, and also a promise to reduce CO2 emissions. So this should be motivation enough, actually. And if we combine that uh, with the innovation power of BSF and, and our purpose, so it's our ambition to make BSF an enabler yeah, to really uh, contribute to a more circular and, and also sustainable future. And we have also heard in the presentations uh, from today um, that we, we can be part of a solution and that camp cycling is also adding uh, to the solution, but it's not all. And there are still big challenges ahead of us if you think about the huge and million tons of, of plastic waste uh, which are still landfilled or even end up somewhere uh, in the environment. So it needs more innovation and, and more solutions to get that solved. Uh, and that's certainly mm -hmm. why we are so motivated. And this is also uh, why, and, and this was stressed as well by Mark, why we need to collaborate among all the different partners, uh, not just along the value chain, but including uh, uh, policy uh, and uh, legislators, public authorities, us as consumers. Uh, so it should be a big motivation to all of us uh, to go for that target to have a more sustainable future. Yeah, uh, but uh, I can also imagine that when you in a, in a large company like BSF is doing this kind of work, it's some kind of transition. So. Uh, are there any learnings that you have from this work that you do with the circular economy that uh, other companies can use? Yeah, that's, that's another good question. Certainly, there are many learnings um, if we, if we uh, think that through or if we recap what we have done so far. Maybe one of them I, I would like to mention is don't wait too long. Uh, don't wait until we see uh, uh, detrimental effects for our sustainable uh, for our um, society or um, our environment, but act fast. Um, and also uh, here, one example was already mentioned by Mark that we see good examples. Um, for example, when we think about electric vehicles, where uh, recycling solutions and concepts are already part um, of the development of, of batteries. Yeah? Another thing uh, might be openness. And I stress that or try to stress that in, in my presentation as well, um, if we talk about openness, uh, we should not go for the one solution, but we should be really open for any type of new technology and innovation um, that can help us. And maybe if I think about a, about a third, I, I can re-emphasize the need for collaboration. Yeah, Need for collaboration um, along the value chain amongst all different partners uh, that can really have an impact on a sustainable um, environment. Thank you, Katya. I mean, we, we, we talked quite a lot about uh, collaboration today and we also heard that the mi minister mentioned that as something that he wants to see more of from the industry. Uh, Mark, uh, I would like to ask you, when you look at the Nordic countries, how can we work even more to be a forerunner in, in this field? How can Sweden and Norway, for instance, be a forerunner when it comes to circular economy and plastics? Uh, yeah, thank you uh, for that question. Um, I, I, having been actually based in the Nordics for quite some time now, um, I, I can say that there is not a lack of ambition. Um, that is certainly not the case. And I think um, you and the Nordic countries, Sweden, Denmark, the other Nordic countries, they have been in the forefront of, of, of championing new feedstock ideas, changing legislation, moving um, uh, towards more bio-based materials um, and feedstocks, certainly more prevalent topic in Sweden than it is comparably in, in Denmark. Um, but I think um, in order to do even more is exactly that sweet spot that um, that Minister Bailan alluded to is that that we need regulation, we need framework conditions. Uh, and here, um, 
I would say that the the, the activities on the right um, uh, framework conditions, regulatory framework conditions, climate for investment, um, uh, co-investment schemes, um, security of investment long run, I'm not quite sure that this has been equally matched to the ambition overall uh, that has been there. So I think I, I very much thank the minister for this invitation, but I think we really need to strive to make that work. And there are pieces in 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 waste legislation. Um, there are pieces in allowing alternative feedstocks um, to be brought into value chains um, and, and then also reward uh, companies, uh, partners of ours, ourselves to to actually bring sustainable products to market. I think this is uh, what the minister also mentioned with market model and business models. And I think here, I think we 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 all, and this is not limited to the Nordics, but since the Nordics has been very early on, uh, you still ha there is still a, a mental head head start uh, compared to other parts of Europe. I firmly believe that, but that in, that is that differentiation that is diminishing to a degree, as we see, because in other places in Europe, I think uh, legislators, industry, societies are catching up very fast. Are you actually saying that we in the Nordic countries, we have a lot of good ambitions and we are really early out with these ambitions when it comes to, for instance, the circular economy, but we are not as fast when it comes to the implementation? Uh, maybe I have created that notion. Um, <laughs> certainly when it comes to the ambition, if we look back five, five years, six years, uh, the Nordics and the discussions that we have seen in the Nordics taking place, they have been unique, I would even say, across Europe. Today, maybe particularly with an acceleration via Green Deal and the European am ambition going forward, I think the rest of Europe simply um, catches up. And, and catches up also very fast because commitments um, are being made. Um, when we look at, for example, um, establishing um, um, the e-mobility or electrification of the automotive industry, um, the investment that now governments are putting in place via pan-European investment vehicles, IPCAIS, um, where the European Union actually immediately supports establishment of value chains, I would really uh, love to see some some initiatives like this as well for uh, either uh, waste-based uh, material feedstocks or bio-based feedstocks, uh, which clearly Sweden is is uniquely positioned in all of Europe to really um, to really take advantage um, of this simply because of the abundance of biomass from traditional industries that use sim that simply are prevalent in Sweden. So what are the main problems or hurdles that you see for making this come, come true? Is that, uh, is that the legislation or is it uh, research programs or what is it that you, that you would like to see being fixed? I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm of course not able to give a full conclusive uh, um, um, uh, perspective. Um, I think there is, there is a lot of uh, research and innovation done by um, uh, in Sweden um, on, on, on key topics that we need to deal with. I wouldn't say that particularly in Sweden, that the challenges are, 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 are unique. I think in most countries we are, we need to work with governments and authorities as industry um, to work on the right regular regulatory framework. Um, so it, it really comes down to um, defining, for example, when we hear Kietil about mixed plastic waste, um, I think there is still a discussion uh, to be had to define end of waste. When does waste become um, a new product? Uh, so the, the challenge of circularity is that it has no start and no end. So, but our legislation to a degree is linear. So when does, uh, de when does for example, paralysis oil as Kietil in, uh, with our partner counterfeit produces, is that now a waste or is that now a feedstock? Um, it's completely different when it comes to transport legislation, uh, um, usage of product, product declaration, et cetera, et cetera. So these are really straightforward questions that we need to solve. And, and here the question is not only down to one country, it, it's in every country um, in that sense that we need to challenge. But I have full faith that we are going to tackle those things. Mm. Thank you, Mark and Katya. I'm looking at my screen now and it's empty, so we have really no more questions that has come in, but I think that's a good uh, 
remark that you do did there that the circularity is circular it's not a linear process and uh, that is important to have in mind when it comes to the action that is needed uh, I, I would like just to take a sh some short minutes to s to summarize what we have talked about today because we, ha we have talked about plastics basically and how important it is to, to circular the loop when it comes to plastic and you can do that both mechanically and by chemical recycling and since plastic is a good material and it's, uh, the, the, the use of plastic is increasing in the world it's really important to find this technology that can take this forward. And we um, uh, heard that from Quantafuel as an example for how they work with this as a case. Then we heard a little bit about the Swedish action plan. Uh, the, the, uh, the government took a strategy for circular economy this summer and now they're working with the action plan and the Minister for Innovation and Industry also invited the industry to collaborate more about how we can make action out of the strategy for circular economy, economy that has been taken. And uh, important things in this can be, for instance, research and test beds and co collaborations and so on. And uh, he also mentioned uh, how important it is to increase the collaboration between Swedish and German companies because we have kind of the same way of looking at, at the, the world and what can be made in this field. And we can really be forerunners and show the world what can be made. Uh, to uh, make the economy more circular. Then uh, Katja Sharprinkel mentioned a couple of things about w what can be important for companies to think about when it comes to implementing this kind of work. And what she said is, is, is don't wait too, too long, start now. Cause, uh, and I think that is important because the world is moving fast and if you're going to take the, adva the advantages of this kind of work, it's always good to be out early. She also man mentioned how important it is to be open, uh, open both with what you do and open to new technologies and new ways of working. And at last also the collaboration. Uh, good ideas usually comes, they can come from inside, but usually they come from the outside. So that's why collaboration is important. Uh, the slides that, we have, that have been shown today will be sent to all of you who have been looking at this by mail later on. And, uh, 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 the slides and uh, we can also hope that next year in no November that we can have a real meeting and uh, really network as well because that is important for collaboration and I also hope that the uh, that the Nordic countries and Sweden increase uh, the investments in green technology and really see the potential with uh, the circular economy and plastics and uh, chemical recycling, because that could be an, op an opportunity for the Nordic countries. Uh, next event by the uh, German-Swedish Chamber will be held on uh, December 8th, and it will be about um, uh, hydrogen and uh, the Swedish strategy for hydrogen and also the uh, project for uh, uh, hybrid where they, uh, in the steel industry where they make steel in an environmental friendly way. So stay tuned to see that. And at last, uh, on behalf of the German-Swedish Chamber of Commerce, and uh, I would like to thank the Minister for Enterprise, Innovation and Industry for the participation, and also Mark Meyer and Katja uh, Scharpinkel from BASF, and of course uh, Katja Böhm from uh, Quanta Fuel for giving us insights about what's going on in this area. And uh, at last, of course, I would like to thank the German-Swedish Chamber of Commerce for uh, arranging this seminar, which is a really good way of increasing collaboration and also the learning. So, at last, thank you for watching. Stay healthy and stay safe. And uh, goodbye for now. <laughs>